Before we dig too deeply into this gun, it will be helpful for us to understand how exactly this contraption works. We will start with a look at the shotgun's several patent drawings and put together a full image of all of its parts. The main combinations of parts include the barrel, upper receiver and their linkage and spring, the lower receiver, the bolt, toggle joint, and their linkage and spring, the firing pin, spring, and sear, the trigger, trigger bar, and trigger nose, the shell lifter and its cam plate, the components of the action release latch, and the hinged toggle catch. Let's start with the shotgun loaded with three rounds. We pull the trigger, which tips the trigger bar up in the back and presses the trigger nose down in the front. It catches the sear bar hanging down from the bolt above and pulls it down, releasing the firing pin to drive forward and fire. The recoiling energy of the round presses back on the bolt and the entire toggle assembly, which is locked in a straight line which in turn presses the upper receiver and barrel rearward as well. This compresses both the return springs in the stock, the upper spring via the pigtail on the rear segment of the toggle, and the lower spring via the left side of the forked linkage connected to the upper receiver. The shorter side of that linkage normally keeps the hinged catch plate compressed into the right side of the lower receiver. But as it retreats, the catch plate is freed to spring inwards. An extension from the bolt pulls the cam plate in the right side of the lower receiver rearward as well. As they reach their full rearward travel, the hinged catch plate springs inward and catches an extension off the rear segment of the toggle. At this point, the lower stock spring begins to press the upper receiver and barrel back forward, but the rear segment of the toggle is still caught by the hinged catch plate. This causes the toggle joint to break downward as the rear toggle segment is levered down by the returning receiver. This in turn pulls the rest of the toggle and the bolt further back even as the rest of the upper receiver is moving forward. A very unique action where the opening of the breech is at least assisted, if not largely driven, by a return spring instead of directly by recoil energy or gas pressure. As the bolt is drawn back, and the barrel pressed forward simultaneously, the empty shell is extracted and ejected from the gun, and the ears of the front segment of the toggle pull the firing pin back to where it catches on the spring-loaded sear. As the upper receiver returns to its resting position, the right arm of its linkage presses the hinged catch plate back flat into the side of the lower receiver which frees the upper stock spring to shove the toggle back forward. As the toggle swings around and straightens, the bolt is driven back forward, and with it, the cam plate. This time, the cam plate catches the stud on the right side of the lifter and levers it upwards to align the new shell to be driven forward and chambered by the bolt. The lifter is allowed to move up and cycle properly, because the shell it cradled was pressed rearward and disengaged the release latch. As the bolt closes and the toggle locks up, the lifter drops back down fully and releases the next round from the tube magazine. The trigger nose, still being held down by our trigger finger, 
is no longer aligned with the reset sear bar, and is instead pressed forward by it, thus disconnecting the trigger. As we release the trigger and the trigger bar springs back up in the front, the trigger nose is free to pop back into its proper position, ready to fire again. Let's watch all of that cycle again. When we get to the last round in the gun, the cycle remains the same until the bolt and cam plate would start to move back forward. Since the release latch mechanism is not being tripped by a shell on the lifter, the lifter itself remains locked in its lower position, which blocks the cam plate from moving any further forward and provides the last round hold open of the bolt. At least until you load a new round and press the manual release button to start the process all over again.